Right, so today I thought I'd try my hand at doing more of a how-to style video. The cup in here is overdue for an oil and filter change, so I thought I'd crack into it and just make a wee video showing you how to do it. With this, if you wanted to do it by the book, you should really take up the front bumper and the intercooler and all that, and it makes it a lot easier. I've done the oil and filter on this car a few times because it's got really short intervals for it. And I just can't, I can't be bothered taking off the front bumper. It's just too much effort. So I'm going to try and do it without that. So I thought I'd show you all how I try and do it. You can generally get away just taking off the front grill, maybe try and get under underneath. It's easy to get at the oil filter, but there's very little room around the oil filter. So you it tend to not be able to turn it or get much purchase on it. I think there is a special tool that the Hatsu uses, it's just an oil filter socket. I don't have one, so I'll just be doing it by hand, or I might use a little oil filter wrench type of thing. But to do this, it's pretty simple. You just need 14mm socket, spanner, whatever, screwdriver for getting the grill out, and then a jack and axle stands, just to make sure you don't die when you're draining the oil. For oil, I got some Castrol Magnatec. It was on set, so I got it. It was pretty cheap, and it's decent enough quality. It conforms to the right regs. I'm using 1040. What you want to use to, is, in my opinion, just depends on the climate and the car. It's pretty cold here, sort of over the year hovers between minus five and maybe gets up to 20 at the height of summer. But the main thing is this car has 80,000 miles on it. I've had it, I think I've put like 30,000 into it between me and my girlfriend. So I like to put 1040 in the car. It may be worse than the factory recommended 530, but I just think, you know, with all that mileage, you know, in Japan, these cars seem to only tend to do 60,000 Ks, 100,000 Ks, and this has, you know, in kilometers about 140, something like that. So it's, it's definitely, it's a lot for such a small engine. So I like to just put a slightly thicker oil and help it along. And I try and keep on top of the changes as best I can. So it's just ticked over 80,000. The other thing is, oil filters, because it's so tight in there and you have so little space, the oil filter is just behind the intercooler on top of the engine mount, that it takes a minuscule little filter. So it's, it's sort of a normal size circumference, but the height of it is tiny. If you go to any parts store and ask them to get you on, they'll get you on that's probably twice the size and you'll never get it in there. I think half the reason for this is so you can actually just slip it in there and it doesn't touch on anything. So I'll put the part number up for this if I remember. Right, this one's from Blueprint, so I'll stick the part number there and I'll put the part number that's actually on it. If I remember to, I'll also try and measure this. Um, so if you're looking, I use Autodoc to get it because it gives you basically any oil filter that will screw in and is the right diameter here. So I then go through and click and open up all the specs and see which one has the smallest height. I think it's like 58 mil from top to bottom, really tiny. So it's, you need to make sure you get the right one. Most places will supply you with a massive one and it'll, you'll never get it in. So first things first, you need to jack up the car. I'm just using one of the small jacks because I can't be bothered really lift the big one up. All, the only reason to jack it up is just to crack the um, sub plug to drain all the old oil out. It's also not a bad idea to just idle the car for a minute maybe. You don't want the car to get too warm, but it's nice. if the oil's just a wee bit warmer, it helps it get out because it's a bit thinner. So we're just under the front of the car here. Now, there's lots of places you can jack this up. You can go, you know, 
the normal jack and points over there, you can jack it off the suspension. But the easiest one, and this is factory permitted in the manual, is to just jack it up off this pump here. If you get down low, you can see it just under the car. And it's the easiest place because it just jacks up the whole front of the car. And I'll probably just throw an axle stand under the suspension there. And then we'll get access to the sub plug, which you can just about see. Over there, silver bolt. And then we can drop the oil back. Okay, so I've got the oil pan under it now. Just need to loosen off this bolt. That's cracked loose. Now, the trick here is, is just to apply a little bit of pressure upwards as you're unscrewing this until you feel it sort of click over like that, so that's completely out now, and then pull it quickly. It's the easiest way to try and stop getting oil all over your hands. You should wear gloves and all that, because I'm pretty sure oil's carcinogenic, especially used oil. Yeah, you can see that's quite black. I can still see through it, which hopefully means it's not too bad. This doesn't need to be super tight, I sort of need to lift it up. Give it a bit of, yeah. So, uh, maybe a quarter turn from finger tight, and that's it good. That's all the oil drained out. Keep the oil pan under here, because when you unscrew the oil filter, it'll drop some more oil down the side of the block. Next thing is the oil filter. I tend to pull this grill off to give me a bit better access. It's just these three clips at the top. I think these are replacements. Originally they would have been they have little plastic screws. I think I replaced these back when the car was coming apart so many times. But one thing to note is I pulled the air con out of this car just to save a bit of weight. It's a convertible so I don't really think it needs it, especially not in this country. So you'll have another radiator here if it's stuck. I've also upgraded the intercooler and the intake. So this area might look a bit different. You'll have a big intake box there and a smaller intercooler here, but it shouldn't make too much of a difference. The main thing is the oil filter is just in here. So first thing, I'm gonna pull this off. And then once you've got those three clips off, you literally just Grab it and pull it straight up. That should come out. There you go. You can see there's just three wee push clips on the bottom. So it's literally just in there. That's where the oil filter is. And this is where sort of the contortionist side of things come in, where you basically just want to try and stick your hand through here and try and undo it. It can be a struggle, which is probably why you should pull the intercooler and the bumper and all off. Or if you can find the right size oil filter wrench, it'll definitely make your life easier. But I'm just going to try and do the contortionist method. Go in through there and take it off. So we'll see how long it takes me. sat on the side of the car, I got some of my blue roll and wiped off all the road grime off and then stuck my left hand in and just grabbed it that way, twisted 
and I managed to just about get it out. See, got it out. So I think that's that's the only way to do it really by hand. Sometimes you can get an oil filter wrench underneath, but there's so little room. I find this is the best way. So, put a bit of fresh oil on the new filter. Yep. You can see, same, same. All good, so I'll just put a wee bit of oil around the edge. I know people argue, do you need to do that, don't you? It does say, actually, I think on the filter here to do that, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, when you put it back, I'll try not to put it on too tight, otherwise this method might not work. If it's really tight, you're probably not going to get the right purchase on it. And you might then have to go through with taking off the intercooler and then you need to, sometimes you can get the intercooler off by just loosening three bolts and just pulling this forward and get the cooler at the top, but it's, it's tough. So hopefully this method works for you. But let's get the new filter in. The manual says about three liters of 1040 with the filter change. This is a four liter jug. So I should have around one liter left, but I'll take it slowly. Take my time. It's good at this point to give the oil cap a little smell for fuel and also look for any sludge. Because that could indicate blown head gasket, something like that, but this one all looks good. If you're smart, you use a funnel. If you're me, you're too lazy for that. So you just try and aim right. Oh god, I'm making a mess of it. Yeah, okay, there we go. I should have put about two and a half in. And basically what you want to do is give it a minute to settle. Oh. Down the spill even. God, this engine's pretty disgusting, but it's a daily driven car, so I won't worry about it too much. One day I'll clean it up properly. Yeah, how's it? Get the lips to get, you do your wipe. Make sure it's clean. And then back in. Pull it back out. So if you can see that, you'll see it's actually over full, it's above that second mark. So the top mark is the full point and the lower mark is the low point. So that's over full, normally at this point you would panic, but because the engine hasn't been run, the oil filter is completely empty. So what you want to do is just get in the car, start it, let it build oil pressure, run it for 20, 30 seconds, and then shut it off. We'll give it a minute and check again, and we'll see the level should have gone down. So that should have filled the oil filter. We got oil pressure nice and quickly. If you don't see the oil light go off in time, you know, if, it, if it's not going out, then you may want to recheck your oil level. You may not have put enough in. But nope, the oil light went out pretty much straight away. So give that a second. We should be good to check again. Again, same procedure. Okay, keep the light. Now we've got it perfect. 
So that was maybe only two and a half liters. I put in there and it's just under the full mark. Now what I'd recommend if you're not sure if it's flat and level is to just take it out for a drive as long as it's close to the top like that you're not going to have any issues. It might be slightly over full, it might be slightly under but we don't need to worry too much as long as it's in the right sort of range. Go take it for a drive for a while and then stop somewhere you know it's level, like a petrol station, supermarket car park, something like that. And stop the car, let it sit for a couple of minutes and then pull that out and check again and see. But I think that should be as good for now. I've got some fresh oil in it and a fresh filter. So I'm happy about that. That should be all good now. If you have any questions, if you have any issues, just let me know. You can message me on Instagram anything but hopefully the car's all good thanks for watching